Time is our most precious asset, so it's time to start acting like it. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Amy TV, where we come together to help you go after the life that you want. Last year, I made a video that I thought was interesting. I'm so excited to see that others found it interesting as well because it became really popular. And that video is called How to Make Time for Everything that You Want to Do. And that really catapulted us into an important conversation about time, how we spend it, and how we can make the most of it. Since then, I have explored even more time management ideas and learned a lot about myself and you about how you spend your time and how you make the most of it. So I thought we should totally do an update to this conversation. Today, we're gonna focus on not only making time for the things that we wanna do, but the balance of not getting overwhelmed by those things as well. Ambition is a beautiful thing but it can also be a lot to deal with in your head at the same time. This episode of Amy TV is also sponsored by our friends at ButcherBox. Stay tuned to the end to find out how they can help you do more that you want to do for your family and in your life without adding more things for you to do. All right, let's get into this. How do we make time work for us without weighing us down. My first tip is for you to get clear on what you actually want to do. It's quite an environment we live in these days, we can get really confused about what those things actually are because we have new ideas all the time and we want to try to do everything. It's really important for you to sit down with your ideas, with all of them, as many as you can think of, and really start to prioritize the ones that mean the most to you, the ones that you actually want to focus on first. There's a process I think would bring you a lot of value to try to figure out what your priorities of all the things that you want are. Are. And it was actually something I went to Shine Squad about first because I read about Warren Buffett's two list prioritization strategy. Here is what you need to know. Regardless of what your goals are, you can separate them in career or in personal, whatever. Just write down everything. Write down all of your goals, all the things that you want to do. Write down 25. 25 is actually a lot. I sometimes have a hard time getting to 25 because I've got a little bit of focus already in what I'm doing, but write down 25 and just narrow your yourself down to that list because that's a long list and the likelihood that you're going to achieve 25 goals in the near future is probably not that good. Now we're going to look at that list of 25 and really maybe this takes you a little bit longer than like the time it takes to write and circle. It might take you a couple of days. Circle the top five that are the most important to you or the most urgent. So now you have your two lists. You have a list of five things that are the top five goals that you want to focus on and you have 20 things that are not. You're now going to get rid of the 20 things. Take that list, tear it up, throw it in the trash can. They do not matter anymore. Your list of top five things should be the way your focus goes no matter what. If they're the most important things to you, nothing else makes the cut right now. When you get really clear on what the actual goals you want to work on are, then you know that if something comes at you or an idea, another idea comes at you or you see somebody's doing something that you think looks cool and you go, does that go toward my top five right now? And you say no, it's an immediate relief that you get to feel that, okay, that can come later. I might write that down in my list of some days or that other list of 20. You might start compiling some other things. It's not for right now. And now you know exactly what to spend your time on. I actually do this, but I do this for both career and for personal because I want to have a balance of both because I tend to get really career oriented and there are things personally that I need to work on as well. So I actually have a list of 10 things and these 10 things I rewrite every morning so that I can get refreshed on what they are. My next tip is for you to track your time. I actually talked about this in the original video from 2018, but it's because it's so important. And I actually think that we've even gotten more passionate about time tracking and calendar blocking and batching and all those things ever since we started this conversation early last year. Just like they tell you to track your spending if you wanna spend less or track your food if you wanna eat less or eat better, you should track your time to see how you're actually spending it to see how much of it is truly valuable. Here's the reason that I say this. Let's say looking at your phone every morning is actually a critical part of your life. Let's say it's massively important to your career or whatever it is you're working on. Then maybe that's not time wasted, but go ahead and track it. I can't tell you that it's not productive if it actually is. Is. So the bottom line is we need to track the time. If you are a podcaster who does research on all of the Netflix shows and reports on them, then binge watching Netflix is probably a great
great way to spend your time because it's contributing to that. However, if you're doing either one of these things, staring at Twitter in the morning or watching way too much Netflix, and you're not achieving your top five, they don't fit into your top five, then I think we can see from the tracking of the time that that is something that we need to limit. You know I like to use the examples that we're all doing, right? We scroll the phone, we watch a lot of TV, we're actually looking at the phone while we're looking at the TV, we're not even looking at the TV, we're looking at the phone. What could you be doing instead? When we look at that time that's on the calendar and we're like, oh wow, I spent four hours watching television last night and scrolling Instagram, like let's be honest, how much do those five goals really matter to us if we're not actually doing anything about it? Sometimes you have to just see the proof that you're not doing the most that you could. If you're interested in more ideas around time batching, calendar blocking, and things like that, I highly recommend that you check out my video with a tutorial on it called Get More Done with Calendar Blocking. This will kind of give you some insight as to what I mean when I'm saying looking at your time tracked on Google Calendar because I'm kind of obsessive about it, if you couldn't tell. Tip number three, ask for help. Like The reality is we actually have good people in our lives who are willing to help us and especially if we ask for it it's amazing what could happen whether somebody complains or whether somebody is willing to jump at the chance it doesn't matter people are good and they want to help we can't do everything ourselves so when we really come to Jesus about that and we're like okay fine I need other humans you know look at what you're doing look at what you can't do all by yourself look at what would be easier if you had a team effort going at it and ask for the help that you need this is something that I'm very clearly obviously at the moment coaching myself on because it's something that I'm always trying to improve in myself. I've always been fairly independent and a lot of that is both wonderful and a defense mechanism because sometimes it's like, oh, nobody wants to help me. It's okay. I'll just do it myself. But that's not true and it actually comes off kind of crummy sometimes to the people who do care. See, I'm self-aware about my problems, okay? I know. I know what's wrong with me. My fourth tip is for you to assign your environments. Something that was extremely important to me was having a home office where I could go into that room and it would only be to work in this home office. I've, I've been working from home from a long, for a long time. So having that space is really important to me because I'm in the living room, that's where we watch TV. In the dining room, that's where we eat. In the kitchen, that's where we eat and kind of like have conversation and all that. Like every space has its thing. And if you blend those up a little bit too much, it can get confusing. If you try to tell yourself, oh, I'm going to work on the couch in front of the TV, but that's the place that you've really assigned in your subconscious where you watch Netflix, it's probably not going to be your most productive work. But when you say, okay, when I wake up in the morning and I have my morning routine, I'm going to do it in the den or I'm going to do it at the kitchen table or whatever the case, just assign those places because usually having the environments decided in your head is a great way to get in the mode when you enter that space. The only other thing I do in this room, I film in this room, I write in this room, I, I do work in this room, and I change my clothes in my closet. But that's all that really happens in here. I don't read in this room because it doesn't facilitate a reading environment. I don't like to eat in here if I'm being good. So thinking about different spaces as different purposes is really helpful for when you want to get more done, you're putting yourself in a focused environment. My fifth tip is for you to make time for self-care. I talked about this in the last video that I posted because because I think self-care can mean a lot of things to different people and it's important for you to know what it means for you. But you got to have those breaks, okay? We can get a lot done. We can be super productive. We can calendar block our entire day and not have a, any room to breathe. But let's be honest, that's probably not going to put us in our best self. We're going to be stressed out. Our cortisol levels ridiculous and we're going to end up on a hamster wheel not getting our best work done. Just getting work, busy work done. Just make sure you choose the thing that's right for you, whether it's just taking a break every once in a while to read a book or just to go watch TV or to go get a massage or whatever it is to self-care so that you can rehabilitate to get back to what you're doing, the thing that you're trying to focus on going after, just do you. Similarly, on that note, my sixth tip is the three musts that I think everybody should have every day for that self-care. Okay, so these are the things I think everyone needs. Everyone's also got their own version. But if you don't have these three things, things, you're not going to get your best work done. You're not going to have the most stuff done. You're not going to be able to do the thing that you want, achieve the goals that you have because you're really not treating yourself with the respect you need in order to be at that level. Those three things are to eat, sleep, and good morning, good life. Wake up on your own terms. Do something that is a routine that is all about 
you taking care of yourself first so that you can be able to show up for a lot of other people, a lot of other things the rest of the day. To me, these are the non-negotiables. And since my book is coming out soon about Good Morning, Good Life, well, we're gonna be talking a lot more about that. But you should search some other videos if you need help in the morning routine department because we've got a lot on that here. My final tip for making time for everything that you want to do without getting overwhelmed about it is to treat your own time like it is just as important as everyone else's time in the world. Both the people that are super close to you and the people that maybe you aspire to be or the people that you think are successful. Your time is just as valuable, just as precious as everyone else's. This is to give you that permission that you need. The permission to take your desires, your wants, your goals, your things that you wanna do with your time seriously. If you're in a job right now that you don't love and you're hoping that you're gonna get a different one that you do, or you wanna start a business, or you wanna do anything else, then what can you do to make the most of that other time that is just as valuable as the time that you're giving to somebody else? They're giving you a paycheck probably, but giving to somebody else to do their thing. All of it is valued time. So how can you spend a little bit of it on yourself, spend a little bit of it on others so that you can eventually get to the point where it's the majority is for you? Because you deserve that. You are worthy of that. You are capable of that. You are deserving of that. And there's probably not a lot of people telling you that. So I want to tell you that because we definitely don't say it to ourselves often and enough. And, and it, we definitely don't have people who are like, oh man, I gotta make sure I tell Amy she's worthy of her own time today. It doesn't happen. And so we really have to remember it for ourselves, which is difficult, but important. It is okay to prioritize yourself. I'm prioritizing myself and making this video, even though there's a jam band outside of my window. I mean, it's just, it's happening, okay? It's happening. I am proof that it can work. Question of the day, what would you do if you were unafraid? We usually find some pretty interesting information in those answers, especially when you think about what those goals are gonna be on that list, and what you would do if you could. Answer that in the comments below. And now I have a bonus tip for you to do everything that you wanna do without feeling overwhelmed, and that's thanks to our friends who are sponsoring this episode of Amy TV at ButcherBox. Something that sometimes overwhelms me, but it means a lot to me, is that I take care of my family, right? So, okay, I need to learn how to do so, a little bit of cooking, and I need to make dinner for me and my husband because I like the ritual of that. But I'm also running a couple of businesses and making videos and stuff, and it takes a lot of time, so it's easy to get very overwhelmed by the cooking process. There's the shopping and the planning and it's, it's a lot of stuff. This is why I try to make the grocery situation and all of my dinners throughout the week as simple as possible so there's no extra time put on my plate so I can put some food on my plate. ButcherBox helps me a lot with this. We do like to eat meat and we like to eat fish at our house, so this is gonna be a great resource for you if you are similar, but here's why. The mission of ButcherBox is to send high quality meat in the mail right to your doorstep. All of the meat is without antibiotics or hormones ever, and they're very humanely raised. The beef is 100% grass fed, the chicken is free range, and the salmon is wild caught Alaska sockeye salmon. So because the meat and especially the fish is carefully curated, it's great for me, especially since we're in the Midwest and we like good fish. From a time-saving standpoint, I know this is coming so I can plan my meals, but all I gotta do is run to the grocery on a weekly basis or even have it shipped to me. And we try to eat healthy and part of eating healthy is finding the meals that we like and eating them as often as we can. We don't tend to get bored in this house of eating the same food all the time because we just know it makes us feel good, we know it tastes good, and so we're happy to have it a couple of times. Probably our go-to meal that we eat very frequently is salmon from ButcherBox with the sweet potatoes and with a little bit of onion and broccoli. I love it, pop it in the oven, it's ready to go, super easy to make after work or on the weekends, and um, that's just been so much easier not actually having to shop for the fish or any other meat that we need uh, throughout the week. They wanted me to share this with you today through Amy TV because right now they're running their best offer Ever. And that is their ground beef for life. That's two pounds of ground beef for free in every box for the lifetime of your subscription. ButcherBox runs a lot of other offers too, but this one is by far their best and it's going to expire soon. So make sure you click the link in the description below because you're a friend of me so you can take advantage of that awesome deal. Hopefully you found some great tips for making time for anything you wanna do without letting it bog you down too much. I'd love to hear what your favorite part of this video was over on my Instagram. Just head to my latest post and leave me a comment. 
comment. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life that you want. Cheers. Could have kept it simple the whole time, but not Amy. No, no. Okay, I'm going to turn the air back on now. <laughs>